What's going on guys? A few days ago I watched a live video from some of my favorite YouTubers, Alan Parr from The Beat, John McRae from What Do You Mean, and Ruslan. They had a great discussion with Marcus Rogers about his prophecies or his failed prophecies. I thought it was a very helpful discussion and edifying for the body of Christ, but hey, be sure to stick around to the end of this video. I want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Here are my takeaways from this live discussion. First and foremost, accountability is necessary. I really appreciate the fact that Marcus Rogers was willing to have a conversation with Alan Parr and John McRae. These are two brothers that publicly criticize him. This shows me a lot about Marcus Rogers as a person that he's willing to have conversations conversations with people who have been critical of him. Then Marcus also said he has brothers who hold him accountable. He has pastors in his life that hold him accountable. That's great. But, <laughs> but you, we have to make sure these individuals in our lives are not serving as an echo chamber. They're not yes men. They're not just telling us everything we want to hear. Listen, if we have people in our lives and they're not willing to disagree with us, then what good are they to us? <laughs> I mean, we need people that's going to help us see our blind spots. We all have blind spots. Now, if he has guys like that, that are willing to tell him, hey, chill out on that, then they really have his best interest in mind. But I'm questioning if those are the type of people he has in his life, because if he did, they would have kind of helped him like, whoa, man, hold off on the bold predictions and saying, God told me this, God told me that. Because if these things don't come to pass, Marcus, you can bring shame to your reputation. You can bring shame to God and shame to Christianity. You see, you're unnecessarily putting yourselves in the crossfire. You know, it's not using wisdom. Then during this conversation exchange, uh, Marcus Rogers, he, he asked John and Alan if they have ever had situations where they made God look bad. You know, he kind of, he tried to flip the question on them. You know what I mean? All these different things that made our, our, our witness harder, all these things, because it made the word of God look as flimsy as these, these prophetic words or whatnot. But um, so would you say, would you say that people say the same thing about all three of you in your own way? No, in what, in, when it comes would, to a prophecy, you, you say I think that, a prophecy is... No, no, it's not, it's not about prophecy. Would you say that there are other Christians who look at your guys' pages uh, and say, man, in some type okay. of way, they misrepresented Christianity. Are they making it harder for me to witness or something like that? And I like how Alan Parr responded to that question. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, the only way someone could criticize him is for a misinterpretation of the Bible. They can't criticize him for saying God told him that God told him this because that's taking things outside of scripture. He said the only way someone could criticize him is by a misinterpretation of scripture. And that is important. Listen, the Bible is clear. He's, it, the Bible says in Deuteronomy that God's standard for prophets is 100% accuracy, right? A true prophet of God cannot give a false prophecy because the penalty was death, right? The, the stone. Now, no one's, that's, that's Old Testament. No one is saying that someone today should be stoned, right? It's just saying that's what God's standard was. Now, imagine if that was still in effect. Will we have all of these YouTube prophets if that was God's standard this to this day? I don't think so. This brings me to my next point. Public error sometimes calls for public correction. John McCray and Alan Parr really pushed back on Marcus Rogers. They really asked him direct questions. Check this clip out. In your last interview with Ruslan, you said that um, you're like, I never call myself a prophet, never call myself a prophet. But um, at the same time, you say, and then you define the prophet as someone who says that God said to say this. And then so like, but you do this in countless videos, count, you know what I mean? Most of your videos are so, told that so God when told God to tell told you. the when God told the disciples to preach the gospel, are they prophets for doing what God told them to do? No, no, they're preachers. No, no, but if you hear a word directly from God and you say that this is a message to everybody else because I'm hearing this word directly from God, is that a prophet? What's a prophet then? It, I, in a, but first, and first of all, like I said, I've never called myself a prophet. I just go pray. And I look at what's going on in the world and I ask God about this and then I share what I feel that God is showing me. And it's like, I want that to be clear. I'm not one of these people running around. I don't care about titles. I if you have a video that says yeah. prophetic word, if you have a video mm -hmm. that's titled prophetic word. You can give a prophetic word and not be a prophet. So, but you never said you're not a prophet. So would you say you're not a prophet? Because that's what I'm confused. That's, that's, what, that's, that's, my, that's my concern. Like, why are people so concerned 
with titles. Like I Marcus. thought their approach was appropriate because Marcus really needed to address some of these things. He said, listen, we all know Marcus has a very big platform. He has a big audience. He has a lot of people listening to his words, a lot of babes in Christ. You know, mind you, he has a lot of people listening to his words, thinking his words is true. We have to be careful when we when we say things, be very careful how we how we choose our words. I said in the previous video about Steve Harvey, you can check that video out in this car right there. But in that video, I quoted James chapter three, where it says, be very careful if you're a teacher because we will be judged more strictly. Listen, sometimes public error calls for public correction. When you're making bold predictions, grandiose claims, and you're saying God showed you those things, if they don't happen to come to pass, you have to expect a reaction from people, whether it's a private message, whether it's a um, reaction video, whether it's a in-person or Skype video, you're going to be, you're going to get a reaction, a response. Someone's going to challenge you or criticize you because you're saying God showed you something that didn't happen. You have to be prepared for pushback. That's, that's the risk you take when you put your opinions out on the internet. Listen, I will acknowledge the fact that Marcus said he was wrong. Where he said he was wrong about his his uh his prediction about Donald Trump. My only complaint with Marcus is he does not really answer questions directly. He didn't answer John McCray's question when he asked him about does he consider himself a prophet or is he not a prophet. Marcus didn't give a direct answer. I thought that was a great opportunity to make everything crystal clear with his audience, even with his critics. He could have said, I am not a prophet, <laughs> or he could have said, I am a prophet. But in my opinion, if he said he was not a prophet, I think that would take away his niche. That would take away his his uniqueness that would set him apart from most YouTubers is the fact that he believes he's a prophet. But if he said he was a prophet, he would have to give an account of why he heard the prophecy wrong. And I think it points back to him. And I think it's a lose lose situation. And this question right here is for the viewers, for you guys. Let me know in the comment section who is causing division in the church? Is it Christians? Is it false prophets who are saying false prophecies and they are stirring up controversy? Or is it Christians who correct the false prophets? Or is it the viewers who leave disparaging comments in the comment section? Let me know. And this is a big takeaway. Stop saying God told me. This is a serious thing when you're saying God told me this, God told me that, because now you're attaching God's name to what you're saying. And if we're predicting something that doesn't come to pass, there's two ways of looking at this. Number one, the Christian did not hear God clearly, or number two, God failed or God was wrong in what he thought was going to happen. Either way, it makes the Christian look incompetent and it makes God look impotent. Nothing good comes from failed prophecies. Just say, I'm not a prophet. Give a disclaimer. Say, hey, these are my opinions. These are my um, thoughts and my views. This is not, I did not hear this from God. This is just my opinion. So that way, if you're wrong, it falls back on you and not God. And just stick to the scriptures. I'm not saying we can't talk about current events, cultural issues, things going on in the world around us we can shed light and we can provide wisdom and insight on those things for sure but just don't say god showed me right refrain from saying that in an attempt to make yourself seem more authoritative right because you said god told me this just say these are my opinions and show the viewer what the bible says in light of your opinion on these events thank you for making it to the end of this video if you like this content be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss a single upload i'll be back next week with another video this is pastor fred by the book peace